Welcome back. You're watching Traders Corner with me in studio. As always, is Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Tonight's a pre-recorded educational show because Garth will in fact be away at this point. Garth, good to have you on the show. Um, and it's quite nice to have uh, an educational interlude. And tonight we're going to talk about stochastic oscillators, uh, which is good because I think uh, what I know about stochastic oscillators could probably fill a small dish and have room left over for peanuts. So <laughs> take it away. <laughs> All right, yeah. So we're talking with stocho stochastic oscillators and specific specifically divergence on stochastic oscillators. We talk about this quite often on the show, but we've never really um, delved into the mechanics of what it is actually. So, and, and people ask me often, what is this divergence and wh what does it mean and how do you apply it? So it's an interesting concept and we're gonna unpack it on this, sh this evening's show. The stochastic oscillator, first of all, is the squiggly line that you see along the top of that graph that we've got it displayed over there at the moment. And that graph, just for, for those that are curious, it's BHP bulletin. Not that it really matters because we're not talking of stock specifics here, but we, mm. um, this is a nice example to look at a stochastic oscillator and how to, how to apply it. Now that thing squiggles up and down between a bottom value of zero and a top value of 100. It can never go below zero and it can never go above 100. Okay. Um, anything down, a reading below 20 is what's considered oversold and a reading above 80 is what's considered overbought. All right, so that's the basics of it. Um, and what I'm most concerned with this week is actually the divergence between the stochastic oscillator and the price because this is where your stochastic actually can have a great deal of power in mm -hmm. its use. And we'll, we'll talk more to that. But if you look at that example that I've got there now, that is what we, we call positive divergence. And what it is is showing you where the price action made a lower low, mm -hmm. yet your stochastic made a higher low. And notice that straight after that, the share price changed direction. It went from a downtrend into an uptrend. Then again, we had it a little while later, we had what's called positive diver uh, negative divergence rather, and that's where your stochastic makes a lower high, whilst your price makes a higher high. And again, it preempted a change in the direction of the trend. Straight after that, we saw the share price heading lower. Mm. Again, a little while later, we saw a situation w again where the price made a lower low and the stochastic oscillator made a higher low. That was positive divergence. And sure enough, again, the price changed direction and moved up mm. after that. And then we've got one more example there. That's negative divergence where the price action makes a higher high and the stochastic oscillator makes a lower high. And then again, the share price changed direction and turned from an uptrend into a downtrend. So what I'm saying is that this is the one area of technical analysis where this tool actually has some predictive power. Because most of technical analysis is backward looking and mm. it has very little predictive power. This is one area where these oscillators and this divergence actually does have some degree of predictive power. And do you find more often than not that it's, it, it works? So, I mean, that, that, that's a classic example, yeah. but uh, if you had to pull up any other price charts, would, um, would the same apply? It, it works with a very high degree of accuracy. I would say, uh, in my experience, probably 80% of the time when you get uh, this divergence, it's work, it works and you can trade it. So it's a very, very high, high degree of accuracy, very reliable indicator to use in your trading. But let's quickly talk about how the stochastic oscillator is, is actually created, first of all. What is it actually, how, how is it calculated? Yeah. So if you take a series of candlestick patterns, like I've shown up on the screen over there, um, th those are just very basic candlestick patterns, and you can see there's sort of a slight upward trend to those patterns. The white ones are bullish candles, in other words, the share price closes higher than the open on the day. Mm -hmm. And then the black candle over there is, an er is a bearish candle where the price action closes lower than the open on the day. Now, every candlestick pattern has a, has a wick yeah. on either side. The, the wicks represent the, ex the extremes of the day's trading range. In other words, the, day's the, the lowest price of the day and the highest price of the day. So your, your, your range high and your range low. And then at the end of the day, your share price will close at a certain level. And what we look at here is actually the percentage. At what percentile of the day's range did the share price close at? So that first candle there, we're saying it closed at 95%. Of, if you take that whole day's range, mm -hmm. it closed at the 95th percentile in terms of where the share price had traded throughout the day. And the next day, it closes at the 80% level. The following day, it closes at 65%. The following day, it closes right on the high of the day, so that's mm -hmm. 100%. The next day, slight down day that only closes at 30 percent of the day's range and the, the last day in this series here the the closing level is in the 90th percentile of the of the day's trading range now what your stochastic oscillator does is it 
then takes these percentile readings and it looks back over a period of time, depending on the speed of your stochastic. Okay. Now, the, the stochastic I typically use for all of our graphs on this show is a 13-period stochastic. So what that means is it takes this little reading, this percentage reading every day for the last 13 days, and it averages it out. Okay. Right, so it's almost like a moving average of that percentile. And then the next day, it'll take a new day's value, and it'll chop the first day off the previous day's series and so on. It'll be a constant moving 13-period stochastic and, and uh, can you choose the period so you can choose the period but what's advisable is to actually use uh, stochastic settings that are commonly used in technical analysis circles okay. so why I use a 13 period stochastic is because that's the most commonly used stochastic oscillator in the world in terms of technical analysis and because okay. technical analysis is a self-fulfilling exercise <laughs> I want to be doing the same analysis as what other people do. Yeah. Technical analysis works because people practice it. Yeah, you don't want to be reading uh, the, the charts upside down, for yeah. example. 100% so. right, <laughs> exactly. So what you can see there is that in this example, which I've just concocted out of my head, I mean, it's not actually a, 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 a proper share graph, this. But you can see that as the, the, the share price moves along, so that stochastic oscillator gradually rises. And it's, it trades between a, a level of 0 and 100, as I said, with anything below 20 considered over sold mm -hmm. and anything above 80 considered overbought. So if we actually go and we have a look um, at an example of this in, 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 in practice, mm -hmm. then let's see. Here's, this is again the chart of BHP Billiton at some stage during its trading history. And what you'll notice here is that take a look at that area I've highlighted there. The share price is trending down. And the fact that the share price is trending down means that the sellers must be stronger than the buyers, of course, otherwise it wouldn't be going down. And because the share price is trending down, it would imply that if the sellers are stronger than the buyers, the likelihood is that that share price is probably closing in the lower half of the day's range every day. Yes. Okay, and that then means that your stochastic oscillator reading gradually begins to fall, as is, as is clearly illustrated in the, in the diagram over there. And similarly, the, as the and, and chart then it, starts it goes, going up. Yeah, and then w again, when the, sh the share price starts to move up, then that's implying that buyers are stronger than sellers. And because buyers are stronger than sellers, the likelihood is that they're closing that share price in the upper half of the day's range each day. And therefore, your stochastic reading begins to climb. And you can see it again over there where we've got a declining trend, your stochastic declines. And then following that, a rising trend, your stochastic starts to rise as well. And that's all very good and well. And as I said, anything below 20 is what's considered overbought, or oversold. And anything above 80 is what's considered overbought. And that's fine. You can buy stocks or you could, so one idea is to buy stocks when they're oversold or to sell them when they're overbought. But that's very simplistic. Mm. And that's not really what I'm looking to, to, to hone in on here today. What I am looking to hone in on is the divergence. And I, sh I explained what that was in the beginning of the show, but we're going to unpack it a little bit more now. So again, here I've got another chart of BHP Billiton once again. And it's got a couple of examples of, uh, of, of divergence. So let's quickly see those. The first one is over there. Now, notice there your, your share price made a lower low, mm -hmm. yet your stochastic oscillator made a higher low. And straight after that, the share price began to change direction. It went from a declining trend into a rising trend. Okay, so you, this divergence was almost predicting the change in direction. All right. And there's more examples of it. There again, we see the, the, tra the price making a higher high, the stochastic making a lower high. That is negative divergence. And sure enough, straight after that, mm. the share price changed mm. direction and went into a downtrend. Again, later on, we saw the price making a lower low, the stochastic makes a higher low, and again, the share price changes direction, starts to turn up from there. And lastly, the, the price there makes a higher high, yet your stochastic oscillator makes a lower high and that preempted a change in trend, and that's negative divergence. Now, what I want to explain, and I'm going to use this IG Markets pen. <laughs> They're not just the sponsors of our show. They also provide me with pens, oh, which well. is very nice of them. Have a look at this. If I throw this pen in the air and then catch it, yeah. what happens as Do the that share again. price... Okay. There we go. As the share price rise... Oh, sorry, not the, the share, but the pen... As the pen rises, it eventually gets to a point where it stops. It's, it's stationary, right, if you excuse the pun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it stops momentarily, then it falls again. Would you agree that as that, chip, uh, as that pen is rising, its momentum is slowing down, mm -hmm. and then it's, for a moment it stops, 
and then it starts to change direction. This divergence that you're seeing on the stochastic oscillator here is exactly that. It's telling you that the momentum of a move is beginning to wane. So in the case there where we've got a declining trend, but your stochastic is making it a higher low, that is positive divergence. What it's telling you is that the momentum of that move down is starting to run out of steam. And the, the slowing momentum is a precursor to a change in direction. And it works in both directions. You can, you can see it working at a high point or working at a low point. And, and if you actually think about that, why is that? Well, for example, that, that example on the extreme left of the page that we've got there at the moment, which is positive divergence, what it's saying to you is that, yes, the share price is still going and it's closing lower every day, except that it's not closing as far into the bottom of the day's trading range as what it might have been previously. Okay. And that is implying that there's obviously some inherent buying that's happening at a sort of almost hidden buying that's happening there. And that's why you get that divergence on the stochastic oscillator. And I imagine if you had to look at volumes, that would also help in your kind of, or does it? Not, uh, not really. I don't generally look at the, the divergence in combination with volume. Um, I, I, I've never found them to, to tie in together very, very well. Now and again you might, but as a general rule, um, I've okay. not found it much, much use. I actually just use it exactly as you see it here. Just look at the, the oscillator and look at the price and see, is there divergence or isn't there? And where you see divergences like this, it's an extremely powerful uh, predictive indicator that you're about to see a change in the trend. And as I say, it's one of the, the trading tools I really like to use because it is very, very reliable. What about, and, and I suppose it also, a, as a trader, if you'd look at a, um, a share where the stochastic is somewhere in the middle, you probably wouldn't want to go there because... Well, it's telling you if the stochastic's in the middle, it's just saying to you that there's, there's the it's momentum kind of even, is neutral. It's, it's fairly balanced. Yeah, it's, it's neutral. Okay. It, it's, it's neutral. Often the, the move that you're looking for might have already started, and by that stage you've, it's gone too far. So, so uh, you know, the, for me, the most powerful use of a stochastic oscillator is this divergence concept. It's, it's like I said, it's the, one of the only tools in technical analysis that actually has some predictive power, and with quite a lot of uh, accuracy as well. Mm -hmm. It's got it's got predictive power. But obviously you don't only rely on it, you rely on other factors. No. You've always got to take just about everything into account. You do. You need to look at all sorts of things and bring it, bring it all together. You can't just look at one indicator and just trade off that. You need to trade off of other things as well um, because the, um, you know, the, the, the technical analysis toolbox that we use has a variety of tools in it and we need to try and get all those tools to talk a story to us. Mm -hmm. So this is just one aspect of the technical analysis that I like to apply. But as you say, a powerful aspect. Yeah. Um, okay, I know uh, quite a lot more about stochastics mm -hmm. and divergence. Garth, uh, to end off with uh, your upcoming courses, same dates um, as you mentioned last week. Yes, so I'm going to be busy during August. In Cape Town on the 15th of August, I've got a high probability trading course. And then in Bloemfontein on the 21st and 22nd of August, I've got an understanding CFDs course followed up by a high probability trading course. Um, so anybody that's interested, please email me, goth at traderscorner.ca.za, and I'll send you all the, all the information. Goth, we're not going to summarize the portfolio this week because this is a, a pre-recorded show and it's an educational show, but just one last question I have. Um, to get sort of uh, the charts, the stochastics as a trader, obviously you have to have a program, um, but I imagine that those are pretty easily available. Yes, the, most definitely. Pretty much all brokers out there these days offer some sort of technical analysis package as part of their trading platform. So, and, and the stochastic oscillator is one of the most common indicators that you'll find on any technical analysis package. Yeah. So very easy to get your hands on. And the one thing I will say is that when you get that package, the default settings are usually the 13 period stochastic that okay. I've used here. Stick to the default settings. You don't need to go and fiddle around and change it. Keep the default settings as they are. Okay, great. Garth, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for joining us. Garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner.